If you're looking to add gauges to your Toyota 22RE, let me show you where you can add some sensors. I've been finding in the summer that while I'm out on the trails, the truck's getting a little bit hot. It's probably because there's a winch, lights, big bumper in the way of the grill. There's not a lot of airflow going in there. When I'm on the highway, there's no problem. Truck runs at a good temperature. But when I'm on the trail, it's getting a lot hot. Now, it is an SR5, so it does have a temperature gauge, but even though I've switched out that sender, the gauge isn't very accurate. So I want to add some aftermarket gauges to keep an eye on the temps. What I've added is these two gauges. One is for oil, and the other one is for coolant. And this is going to help me keep track of uh, how hot the engine is. Now, it's a little tough to find out where to put the sensors, so I'll show you where I put the sensors. For the oil pressure sensor, what I ended up doing was teeing off of where the oil pressure is. That black rubber boot covers up the oil pressure sensor for um, the SR5 models. And you can see there, I just teed off of it and put my other sensor there. If you don't want to tee, there is actually another plug that's right behind the motor mount. Uh, it's a little bit crowded in there, and so I didn't opt to go and put the sensor in there. I just took the sensor from where the oil pressure is. And it works quite well. You just need to remember that this oil pressure sensor is after the fuel pump, and therefore it's a little bit cooler. It hasn't gone through the engine yet. Uh, this is if you have an oil cooler on like I do. The oil is cooled before it goes through the pressure sensor and therefore the temperature sensor. The 22RE already has a number of temperature sensors, so if you want to take advantage of one of those, you can. If you want the one that goes to the gauge for the SR5 cluster, it's right down there between cylinders number three and cylinders number four, the one with the blue um, connector on it. There are two more sensors that are underneath the throttle body. There they are there. The one closest to us is a coolant temperature sensor for the ECU, and the far one is a coolant temperature sensor for the cold start injector. You can always tee into one of those as well. As you can see there, there's another sensor that's right on top of this housing. It's hard to see. And that one has two vacuum hoses going to it. That's your BVSV, the bimetallic vacuum switching valve. And that one's actually used in conjunction with uh, the throttle body and the throttle position sensor. So you can always tee into one of those as well. Some models of 22RE even have a port that's on top of the thermostat housing. So there's the thermostat right there. And right here, this is where I went to put in an adapter and that's where I'm actually getting my coolant reading from. Now that coolant reading will read differently than the gauge because the gauge for the SR5 cluster, which again is down there, that's reading it before it goes through the radiator and before it gets to the thermostat. However, this one is before the radiator, but it's after the thermostat. So this one will stay colder until the thermostat actually opens and then coolant goes by it. I'm just using this as a secondary method to see how hot the engine is. So I'm really only interested at the peak temperature, not necessarily how warm it's warming up. I can use the one on the dash to determine how warm or how fast the engine is warming up. This one's going to tell me how hot the actual engine is. So you might be thinking, if I put that sensor in that fitting, what came out of it? The answer is this sensor. And what is that sensor used for? I don't know. I do know that there's some extra plugs here. There's a round one here, a double spade one there. There's another round one right here. So there's some extra plugs, but they don't actually connect to anything. And one of them was connected into the sensor in that port, but I don't think that sensor actually did anything. And here's why. Internet seems to think that one possible uh, reason for that sensor is fuel pressure. And once the engine heats up, then it modulates the fuel pressure. But that's not true. The fuel pump in the fuel tank is only an off and on. It's, it's triggered, and as I said, once you do start on the key switch, it will energize the fuel pump. 
and otherwise the fuel pump is energized by the air meter in the air box. This is not a mass airflow, it's just a uh, door that once air passes through it on its way to the engine, it goes and, uh, and ignites that fuel pump. So the fuel pump is activated either by that or by the key switch. And if you actually look at the fuel rail, there's a vacuum uh, hose attached to the regulator. The fuel pressure is by vacuum. It's not according to this sensor here. Uh, what else could that sensor be? Well, some people seem to think that it's related to automatic transmission and that if the engine gets hot, then it adjusts the automatic transmission, holds a gear or something like that. I'm not too sure what the theory is there. Well, this is a manual vehicle, so I don't have an automatic transmission, but I can pretty much assume that in 85, they didn't have an electronic uh, automatic transmission. It's controlled by hydraulics, all the passages there. Maybe there's a vacuum operation there. I believe there's probably a kick down cable for it. It wasn't electronic. There's no electronic computer for uh, automatic transmissions. And this one doesn't have an automatic transmission, so that's not what it was anyways. Something people think is related to air conditioning, which it absolutely could be, but this vehicle doesn't have air conditioning, never had air conditioning, wasn't an option on this one. So why did it have this neck here with that fitting and that sensor in it to begin with? Well, this isn't the original engine. This is a replacement engine. The original engine, actually this might be the third engine, I'm not too sure. It's definitely at least the second engine because when I got the truck, uh, someone did some of their own maintenance slathered a lot of that RTV silicone around when they were doing the water pump. That RTV got inside the engine, clogged up a couple uh, oil passageways on a main bearing, and it ended up throwing a rod through the side of the block. So this is a replacement engine. I can't remember what year this is from. I think it's a 1990. It may have been attached to an automatic transmission. It may have had uh, air conditioning at one point in time. I have no clue, but that sensor there is the new sensor for the gauges inside and the sensor that I pulled out did nothing. I ran around with no sensor in there or the sensor at least unplugged for a while and the engine runs exactly the same. There is absolutely no difference whether that sensor's in there or not. So therefore it is removed. Um, so if you do have an 85 and you have a thermostat housing that doesn't have a, a hole drilled in it for a sensor, you can probably get one because there's ones that had uh, two fittings, there's ones that had one fitting, this is a single fitting one. The double fittings were used on turbo trucks and you can use one of those uh, and it works absolutely fine. One last alternative is to actually use the drain plug that's on the side of the block. You can see there, there's a drain plug that uh, is used to drain your block of coolant. You can always put an adapter in there and then run your coolant sensor there as well. So there you go. A few different spots to tap your sensors in when you're putting in aftermarket gauges. Hope this helps. Until next time, I'll see you later.